Welcome to Architecting with Google Cloud. Our topic today is going to be desktop apps and cloud. Hmm? It might not seem like an obvious combination, but let's dig in. So hi, everybody. I'm Brian, and I'm an engineer helping users with infrastructure at Google Cloud. And one of the architectural challenges that we run into often is around network latency and how to get people connected with their desktop apps to the backend systems running somewhere else, you know, often in cloud. Um, and depending on where they are, that latency can get pretty high. Um, and if there's multiple round trips, it can get fairly slow. Um, so one common pattern for, for dealing with this is to actually move the desktop application closer to the database and then connect to that remotely like with a remote desktop uh, application of some kind. So you kind of have a window into the application running elsewhere on a VM, perhaps, uh, next to the database. Um, and that keeps the really chatty stuff there. And then you kind of get a window into this app. Um, and to explore that further, um, we've got uh, Rick from Citrix here today. And Citrix, they have been for a long time focusing on tools to help make this pattern easy and reliable. Um, easy as possible to run. So thank you for coming, Rick. What do you do at Citrix? Uh, pleasure. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me today, Brian. Uh, well, I've actually I've made pretty much my entire IT career around Citrix technologies uh, for longer than I care to, to unveil in such a public forum. But uh, the last three years, I've actually been uh, at Citrix working in the Strategic Alliances team, focusing on one of our most important technology partners, and that's Google. So I'm a solution architect, and all my time has been spent at the intersection of Google technologies and Citrix technologies, and the, the problems we solve and the solutions we have to market together. Fantastic. So we have exactly the right person here. Um, I. Um, my Citrix experience is mostly, I think, you know, maybe from 20 years ago, where you, know, you use Citrix to connect to some, like, MS Office applications or, you know, SAP or like Lotus Notes or something uh, off somewhere else. I imagine it's changed a bit since then. Um, is that still a common pattern or like how are they, you know, <laughs> I imagine a lot has changed anyway. A lot has definitely changed all the way up and down the stack. But if you consider the, the fundamentals of the virtualization solution to be Remote, remotely connecting to an application running on a different host, the fundamentals of the technology are still the same. Uh, they're still used to solve a lot of the same problems, but the problem set that it's, re it's solving now has actually gotten dramatically bigger. And we can chat a little bit about that as we work our way through here. Uh, but the, the Citrix of today, I mean, it's, it's been around for quite some time. It's, it's been solving problems for enterprise IT customers around secure access, application delivery, uh, and even networking technologies, believe it or not, uh, for well over 25 years. Uh, but back in the day, say in the 20, 25 years ago, uh, the technology stack called WinFrame or MetaFrame at the time was pitched as a remote access solution. And you know it, it, it took the, the model if we look at corporate IT back in that day, IT was typically enterprise would build a data center. It was their own building. They build their entire stack from cooling and cabling all the way up through CPU network uh, to a secure perimeter. They build their own applications that they'd run their app stack inside of the data center. They'd install the app on their client computers who were in a lot of cases in that same office. Clients would connect to their apps. Client server was a thing. And, uh, and they were happy. Well, that use case started to fall down as the complexity of IT and users' expectations started to change. So as, as organizations started to, to bring in multiple data centers, uh, multiple remote offices, mergers and acquisitions, offshoring of developers, you know, the, the, a very, very broad range of, of different influences started to come in. And that model of where you run client-side XE uh, on a client device and server side, you know, connecting to the server side, and we'd have really chatty protocols and stuff that we would develop to back then, um, that model would break down. So people would leverage uh, session remoting, as we'd consider it today, and uh, desktop and app virtualization 
as a way to deliver applications to users on whatever device they happen to be, be it corporate owned or BYO, uh, on over whatever type of a network the user happened to be on. That was kind of the foundation. And that foundation of the solution is uh, still in play, still solving problems for customers uh, today. We do, however, call it something a little bit different. Today, today we'd call it uh, VDI is the uh, popular term that we would call that kind of uh, solution pattern. Uh, and that's short for virtual desktop infrastructure. Gotcha. So virtual desktop infrastructure. What, what does that look like concretely for folks today? It, you know, are they still running it all in their own data centers? Or what does it look like today? So some customers are still running it in their own data centers. And we call it VDI today, oddly enough. Um, but it's, it's a bit different. So you'll hear the term DAS or desktop as a service used today. And while the fundamentals of the solution are the same, uh, at, it's essentially a solution spectrum. At one end of the solution, you've got all customer managed infrastructure, software components, control plane, everything, um, typically on, on stuff that they bought in a perpetual manner and then built up on stuff that they own as well. And the other end of the spectrum with desktop as a service, similar to infrastructure as a service, database, you know, all the as a service that modern networking and cloud technologies have brought us. Um, so you've got a bit of a continuum. So what we, uh, there are customers that still run what we call DAS today with a, a Citrix control plane that they build and manage their own in their own data center. But then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got the customers that have evolved or maybe even started in the cloud, right? The, the whole born in the cloud type of generation. And so, you know, you've got it, while you've got a continuum in between there, uh, at the far end of the spectrum and the DAS end of the spectrum, instead of the customer buying, building, managing, and maintaining the entire stack top to bottom, they consume managed services or cloud services from providers such as Google and uh, admittedly also Citrix. And so in doing so, they can focus on the core business stuff that adds value to their business and, and offload these specialized technology functions to the experts. And then we, be, we end up being responsible for managing and maintaining uh, and updating and securing and providing high availability and, and all those kinds of things. So it's, a, it's, it's a, a bit of a different world. Still, the core of the technology stack is the same. Got it. And if I'm, if I'm hearing this right, it sounds like another instance of this pattern people sometimes call move and improve, you know, where you take an existing app, you, you kind of move it over into cloud, and then you, you start iteratively adding kind of more managed bits to it or more integrations to other things uh, to make it work better. Um, so for folks who are currently running Citrix in their own data centers, what, what does this move and improve path look like concretely, you know, for them? So you've got, you've got essentially two different components. I'm simplifying things a little bit. But if you want to call the, uh, the two customer managed components in the VDI model, you could call the control plane, the virtualization control plane. And that's what I was talking about, where they get the software from Citrix, they download it, they install it on their own stuff. And then what we call the VDAs. And the VDAs stands for Virtual Delivery Agent. It's simply a virtual machine that has our VDA software installed on it. And that's what virtualizes the user interface and remotes it to the user somewhere else. So if you think about any, any deployment of Citrix virtualization technology, you've got a control plane and you've got the customer managed components or the VDAs. So as customers adopt cloud and cloud technologies, you know, they've got to have some measure of, of infrastructure up in the cloud in order to put an application up there, right? So in the Google world, that's typically a landing zone. They have to have a landing zone. They got to connect that landing zone to their corporate data center, their, 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 their old self-managed stuff. Once they got their landing zone, then they can start to extend services such as Active Directory uh, up into the cloud. And they can also start moving applications like say, you know, all the infrastructure to support SAP or, you know, any other number of corporate applications, moving those from on-prem up into the cloud. So the logical move you would expect is if you want to have the application running next to the data, which you do because that's where you, that's how you provide the best performance, right? 
is to take the VDAs and move the VDAs up into the cloud. Well, that's absolutely something customers can do with a, a customer managed control plane. However, what customers will typically do is start to adopt our cloud services, start to, to utilize Citrix DAS. And so what they do in that process is they're shifting away from having this stack of a customer managed control plane, their virtualization control plane, a database servers, front end web servers, delivery controllers, management infra, um, you know, and there are a few other uh, bits and, and moving, moving pieces to that. Uh, they trade that whole layer that they used to manage out for a couple of virtual machines that we call cloud connectors that live up inside of their GCP projects. So in doing so, those cloud connectors essentially function as proxies for the communications and allow the customer inside of their private VPC up on Google Cloud to deliver applications, build and maintain a stack of VDAs, deliver applications uh, to users, and do so in a way where Citrix is now responsible for high availability, for security, for patching, for the, the evergreen maintenance of it, right? Um, so it's, uh, you know, from the solution perspective, if you're starting from the ground today, you got those two ends of the, the continuum uh, and, you know, customers can obviously start at the, the VDI world and work their way up into the DAS world. Okay, this is fantastic. Um, if somebody wanted to give this a try right now, um, what would you recommend? Where should they go and get started? So I can recommend a couple of things. Uh, if they're not ready to talk to a human, they can, they can find a Citrix DAS for a Google Cloud product in the Google Cloud Marketplace. Uh, obviously, Citrix.com has plenty of stuff on it as well. Um, but if they're, they're really interested in digging down and getting into some of the nitty gritty of you know, how these pieces work together and what these design patterns are, you know, what is this cloud forward uh, design pattern, uh, we'll send them in the direction of our solution hub on our Citrix stock site. So that's that whole whole solution hub is focused specifically on the Citrix on Google Cloud uh, solution stack. Uh, so those would be the, the two places that I would suggest people start. And if they're ready to, to move forward from there, they can also reach out to their, their friendly neighborhood Google Cloud or Citrix salesperson. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rick, for sharing your deep Citrix experience here. Like, I feel like my mental model of this being a window into these GUIs running remotely is still true, but there's just a lot more to it. Um, and that is great to see. Um, and I, I think it's really nice to have another example of uh, tools to help people focus on the, the specific apps for their businesses and their end users. Um, and, you know, kind of delegate and get some help with the stuff that is kind of common patterns. So, um, Hopefully, you know, you can let Citrix and Google Cloud help out with managing some of that. Please check out the links below. Uh, we have links to all the things that Rick mentioned. And thank you so much for joining us with this episode of Architecting with Google Cloud. Uh, if you want more, please click and subscribe. <laughs>